Good morning. Bear with me. I'm, I'm, we're doing things just a little bit differently this morning. Um, we have a special guest with us, um, Pamela Anastasia Barksdale, who's right down here. <laughs> um, uh, Long-term uh, career missionary from Albania, who's uh, making her rounds of parishes uh, over here in the States right now and uh, visiting people. I remember meeting you years ago down at St. Paul's, uh, probably 20 years ago. I don't know. Anyway, our, our ages are <laughs> we're, we're getting along in years. And so she will be speaking to you at the end of liturgy after the dismissal. So please um, stay here and listen, listen to her. And um, I have a short encyclical to read to you from our patriarch. The ecumenical patriarch is All Holiness Bartholomew in Constantinople and New Rome. Most honorable brothers and blessed children in the Lord, we glorify the God in Trinity who has once again guided us as the church to the venerable and blessed period of holy and great Lent, the arena of physical and spiritual discipline and ascetic struggle, in order to prepare ourselves in a manner according to Christ and journey in humility to the holy and great week and life-giving resurrection of the Lord. Ascetic discipline is, of course, not only a feature of holy and great Lent, nor is it solely a matter of concern and obligation to monastics, nor again is it a result of external influences on the Christian ethos, a foreign element to our devotional life. Asceticism belongs to the core of Christian existence and the life of the church. It constitutes a calling by Christ to his faithful and a witness of his saving presence in our lives. As believers, we do not address as impersonal and impersonal or inaccessible God, but the incarnate word who revealed the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit, the fullness of grace and freedom. In this sense, fill with divine blessings, and especially profound experiences, holy and great Lent remains a dynamic expression and revelation of the treasure and truth of the church's life in its entirety. Nothing in the life of the believer is fragmentary or an end in itself. Life in Christ is holistic and undivided. Repentance, humility, prayer, fasting, good deeds, all of these are intertwined and orient the believer to the Eucharist of the church, the eschatological mystery of the kingdom. Ascetic struggles are the beginning, the narrow gate that leads us to the Holy of Holies. In our tradition, there is never asceticism for the sake of asceticism. Ascetic discipline is always a journey. It's fulfilled when it becomes part of the church, when it leads us to communion of the sacred mysteries, which in turn incorporate us into the movement of the church towards the kingdom. Let me remind you of the example of St. Mary of Egypt, who is honored on the fifth Sunday of Lent. After 40 years of harsh ascetic struggle and unceasing prayer, she sought to partake of the body and blood of Christ at the hands of St. Azosimos, in full knowledge that Holy Communion is the source of life and the medicine of immortality. In the same vein, the Holy and Great Council of the Orthodox Church from 2006, which described fasting as a great spiritual feat and the expression par excellence of the ascetic ideal of the Orthodox Church emphasizes that the true fast affects the entire life in Christ of the faithful and is crowned by their, their participation in divine worship, particularly in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. <clears throat> there is no Orthodox spirituality without participation in the divine Eucharist through which we believers become one body, a communion of persons, the community of life, participants of the common salvation in Christ the Savior, who is the common good. Therefore, fasting is submission and obedience to the rule of the church, a communal experience. Great and Holy Lent is an invitation for us to discover the church as a place and way of sanctification and sanctity, as a foretaste and image of the splendid radiance of the fullness of life and of the complete joy in the eschatological kingdom. Experientially, 
and theologically, it's impossible for us to comprehend the spirit of holy and great Lent if we do not perceive it as a journey towards Pascha. The entire period of, fa of, pas of fasting preserves the Paschal perception of life. Gloomy asceticism is a perversion of the Christian experience. It is the ignorance of the Im Im imminent grace and future kingdom. It is life as if Christ never came, without expectation of the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come. This spirit was the experience of the fast before Pascha in the early church, where there was a time when the catechumens prepared for holy baptism during the divine liturgy on the night of re the resurrection. Even when later the catechetical nature of this period of fasting was replaced by the ethos of repentance, the experience of repentance as a second baptism was nevertheless preserved and remains as the existential, existential disposition that leads us once more to the paschal Eucharistic fullness of ecclesiastical life, to the home of the Father, to the communion of the Holy Spirit. In this case, too, the lifting of the cross comprises the way to the ineffable joy of the resurrection. Throughout these days, the pious people of Ukraine carry their own weighty cross as they suffer the unspeakable abuses of an unprovoked, irrational, and hostile war which propagates pain and death. Co-suffering co with our tested brethren and children, we testify our supplication, we intensify our supplication to the Lord of mercy and the God of peace unto the immediate cessation of this conflict and the prevalence of justice and peace which are the foretaste of the redeemed joy of the kingdom of God. This self-same salvific truth of the Orthodox faith, piety and spirituality is also emphasized by the event of the sanctification of the holy myrrh, which by the grace of God we, 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 will, we will officiate at this year during Holy Week at our sacred center in the Fanar. This blessed and divinely efficacious oil of the Eucharist of myrrh transmits the diverse gifts and manifold charisms of the Holy Spirit through the sacrament of chrismation upon the newly illumined heavenly citizen for strength and participation in the life of the church, the foremost and foremost the communion of the sacred mysteries, as well as for the divinely inspired presence in the world and witness for the gift of grace and hope that lies in us. The character of the Holy Spirit as force of communion is also manifested in the way that the holy myrrh is prepared by boiling ingredients offered by the local Orthodox churches, as well as in the place and time of its blessing within the Eucharistic assembly, immediately following the sanctification of the holy gifts. But equally, in the other church, church uses, but equal in the other church uses of holy, holy myrrh, such as the chrismation of heterodox and lapsed Christians entering the holy church the consecration of churches and holy altars and dimensions and so forth. With these sentiments, as we pray that the arena of fasting will prove smooth and our journey towards the Lord's Pascha will be unimpeded, we invoke upon you our most honorable brothers in Christ and beloved children of the Mother Church of Constantinople throughout the world, the life-giving grace and great mercy of Christ our God, who forever blesses the ascetic achievements of his people. For Holy and Great Lent, 2022, Bartholomew of Constantinople, your fervent supplicant for all before God. Please stand. <laughs> 